When it comes to cinematic adaptations of Stephen King's novels, no other film has been analyzed more than Stanley Kubrick's take on The Shining from 1980. In Kubrick's signature style, The Shining's hypnotic atmosphere, meticulously crafted production design, and ambiguous plotting has puzzled and intrigued viewers for decades. While initial critical reaction was mixed, with some labeling it an incomprehensible mess, The Shining is now widely regarded as one of the greatest horror films of all time. The film tells the story of writer Jack Torrance, who, along with his wife Wendy and son Danny, becomes the caretaker of the Overlook Hotel during its winter off-season. Throughout their stay, the psychically powered Danny is warned of the hotel's evils by his imaginary friend Tony and is haunted by visions of the hotel's murderous past. Meanwhile, Jack is seemingly possessed by the ghost of previous caretaker, Delbert Grady, who had murdered his family in the 70s. Compelled by Grady and armed with an axe, Jack attempts to murder his own family. For the exterior shots of the Overlook Hotel, Kubrick used Oregon's Timberline Lodge, which was partially reconstructed at EMI Elstree Studios in England. Elstree also housed the hotel's interior sets, several of which were based on California's Awani Hotel. The Overlook's Gold Room, however, took inspiration from that of the Biltmore Hotel in Arizona. Unfortunately, on January 24, 1979, a large-scale stage fire destroyed these sets, causing delays to both Kubrick's shoot and that of The Empire Strikes Back. In order to set the tone of the shoot, Kubrick screened David Lynch's eraser head for the cast and crew. In true Kubrick fashion, filming took over a year to complete, and the stressful demands of the director caused actress Shelley Duvall's hair to fall out. Much to the actor's dismay, the film's shooting script saw daily rewrites, as documented by daughter Vivian Kubrick in her film Making the Shining. Kubrick's revisions even continued after the film's premiere, when he recalled all prints of the film in order to remove its original ending. In this sequence, the Overlook's manager, Stuart Ullman, reports to a hospitalized Wendy that Jack's body could not be found, before giving Danny the yellow tennis ball belonging to his father. Technically, The Shining is known for being one of the first films to utilize the Steadicam, a hand-operated camera stabilization system. In fact, Steadicam inventor Garrett Brown was hired as a camera operator for the shoot. For the numerous shots following Danny on his tricycle, Brown used a wheelchair rig that Kubrick had equipped with a speedometer in order to maintain a precise pace. Of The Shining's cultural influences, it's thought that Kubrick was inspired by Francisco Goya's print, The Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters, which is quoted in the novel's epigraph. Likewise, the look of the ghostly Grady sisters is strikingly similar to Diane Arbus's identical twins photo. The scene in which Jack chops through the bathroom door with an axe resembles scenes from both D.W. Griffith's Broken Blossoms and Victor Joostrom's The Phantom Carriage. Famously, Jack Nicholson's ad lib line, Here's Johnny! was an impression of Ed McMahon's introduction of Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. Here's Johnny! Having lived in England for years, Kubrick didn't understand this reference and nearly cut it from the film. Regarding the meaning of Kubrick's film, several theories exist, many of which were covered in the 2012 documentary Room 237. While a news correspondent finds references to Native American genocide in a Calumet tin can, a playwright likens the film to the Greek myth of the Minotaur in the maze. A history professor sees the use of a German typewriter as a nod to the Holocaust, while an electronic musician considers Danny's Apollo shuttle sweater to hint at Kubrick's own work in faking the moon landing. In regard to The Shining, Kubrick spoke of the inherent evil in the human psyche, and how horror tales express the archetypes of the id. The Shining explores horror by subtly commenting on the irrepressible violence of human nature, of the Overlook's past as a Native American burial ground, the murder of the Grady family, and Jack's suggested abuse of Danny. Furthermore, the elusive qualities of Kubrick's film tie into its themes of isolation. The labyrinthine hallways of the Overlook Hotel 
the hedge maze, and the film's unreliable narrative may imply that the existence of these ambiguities are more important than any conceivable allegorical meaning. Published in 1977, The Shining is an amalgamation of King's tropes, a psychic child, a writer as a lead character, and an inherently evil location. King conceptualized the novel while vacationing with his wife Tabitha at Colorado's Stanley Hotel. On top of staying in the supposedly haunted Room 217, the couple arrived to find the building eerily empty, it being the end of the hotel's regular season. Many of King's unconscious fears made it into The Shining, including his own struggles with alcoholism and anxieties of fatherhood. Literary forebearers to King's novel include fellow tales of inherent evil, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, made into the 1963 film The Haunting, and Burnt Offerings by Robert Marasco, made into a film in 1976. Interestingly, the book's title was inspired by the 1970 John Lennon song Instant Karma, which contains the repeated line, We all shine on. Famously, King dislikes Kubrick's adaptation and its many changes to the source material. One major complaint of King's is that Jack Nicholson's performance portrays Jack as being crazy from the beginning. King also claims that Kubrick put too much emphasis on Jack's domestic evils, effectively undermining the overlooked supernatural powers. While King writes his characters as relatable everyday people, Kubrick's objectivity renders them with little personality. As the author explained, Kubrick is a man who thinks too much and feels too little. The author's distaste of Kubrick's work eventually led to the creation of a three-part miniseries in 1997. Written by King himself and directed by Mick Garris, the series illustrates the several changes between Kubrick's film and the novel. Major differences include the film's botanical maze, which was originally an assortment of living hedge animals, and Jack's demise. In the novel, he dies in a boiler explosion. Expanding on the novel, the miniseries ends with Danny's high school graduation, revealing that Tony was a grown-up Danny. King's novel also saw additional context. A prologue titled Before the Play, detailing the Overlook's torrid history, was first published in Whispers magazine in 1982. The book's original epilogue, After the Play, was thought lost for decades until an early manuscript was discovered in 2016. In 2013, King continued the story of Danny Torrance with Dr. Sleep, detailing an adult Danny's run-in with a cult of psychically powered immortals. With The Shining, Stephen King's work arguably saw its greatest interpretation, one shrouded in mystery. Despite their differences, King's novel and Kubrick's film will likely mesmerize fans for decades to come. In many ways, The Overlook Hotel has a hold of us all. This video was brought to you by the following patrons on Patreon. Right now, patrons can decide whether I cover the Alien franchise or the Nightmare on Elm Street series, so head over there now to cast your vote. And don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos.